infectious diseases, research, medicine, health. Welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. And now, broadcasting from the Outbreak News Skylar Studios in beautiful West Central Florida, here is your host, microbiologist and editor of OutbreakNewsToday.com, Robert Harriman. Well, hey everybody, this is Robert, and welcome to today's show. Now, a new study from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill found that substandard and falsified medicines, including medicines to treat malaria, are a serious problem in much of the world. Here to talk about this very serious issue in more detail is Sachiko Ozawa, PhD. Dr. Ozawa is a health economist and an associate professor at the UNC Eshelman School of Pharmacy. She's also the lead author of the study published in the journal JAMA Network Open. Dr. Ozawa, welcome to the show, ma'am. Thank you very much. Um, fake medicine it sounds far-fetched, sounds a little scary. Uh, Dr. Ozawa, can you elaborate on what this means? Sure. So our study actually looked at both substandard and falsified medicine. And the majority are actually substandard rather than falsified, which might be a good news. So substandard medicines means that the medicines may not be at the quality standards that they should be at, meaning they may have been poorly manufactured or kept in poor uh, conditions in during shipping or storage, or that the drug is beyond the expiration date. Now, on the other hand, falsified medicines are those that are deliberately or fraudulently mis uh, misrepresenting the identity, composition, or the source of the product. And those can be quite scary, sure. uh, but much much of the um, medications are substandard rather than falsified. Okay, well, that is some good news. Uh, where do we primarily see this problem? The problem is actually primarily in low- and middle-income countries uh, where there's poor pharmaceutical governance, weak technical capacity, and poor supply chain management. Um, and how does this, how did this problem even come into existence? So the problem really starts from the um, poor quality control and supply chain, weakness in the supply chain in many of these countries. Um, they do also come into high-income countries. It's not just the problem in low- and middle-income countries, but the the majority of the burden is in these poorer countries. Well, how about the uh, fake medicines? How do, how do they come into existence? The fake medicines, there may be some intentional um, intent to uh, create these poor, um, these uh, medications that may have different active ingredients, um, in order to make some profit is usually the uh, the um, guiding principle behind yeah. so why those come into existence. So it's like a criminal operation? Correct. Yeah. Okay, um, Dr. Ozawa, can you go ahead and discuss your study that was uh, published in uh, JAMA Network Open and, uh, and uh, your, the findings that you found? Sure. So we asked the question, what's the prevalence and the estimated economic burden of substandard and falsified medicines in low- and middle-income countries? And we conducted a systematic review and a meta-analysis. The systematic review looked at 265 studies, and in our meta-analysis of those papers that had more than 50 samples that were tested, uh, we found uh, 96 studies. And across them, um, we found the prevalence of this problem of substandard falsified medicines in low- and middle-income countries to be 13.6% overall. And it was slightly higher for antimalarials at 19.1% and 12.4% for antibiotics. And those were the two most commonly um, found to be substandard and falsified. We also did an analysis on the economic impact of these poor quality medications and uh, the data was very limited. It was limited primarily to market size, and it ranged widely from 10 billion to 200 billion, mm. orders of magnitude difference. Was there any particular place on the planet that th this was, it was the biggest problem? 
Yes, it was primarily uh, in Asia and Africa that had a higher levels of um, medication um, that were substandard and falsified. We found that it was around 18.7% in Africa and 13.7% uh, in Asia. Wow. Now, this is, of course, a huge public health problem for a number of reasons um, concerning, you know, treatment. And uh, is there any other reasons it's a really big public health problem? Sure. Let's, let me explain. So poor quality medicines increase ri increase risks of morbidity and mortality, mm -hmm. and that would prolong illnesses and heighten the risk of treatment failure, poisoning, and adverse drug interactions. Yeah. But beyond all these health in, in implications, there are also other implications, such as um, drug resistance. So the circulation of these poor quality medications can place entire community at risk of drug resistance, which means that the treatment effectiveness could go down with those medications. And it would also undermine people's overall trust in the health system, in the medications, and in healthcare professionals. Um, it also results in economic uh, impact uh, of people se uh, spending money on medications that are ineffective or could actually cause harm. Now, uh, to, to go ahead and close this interview out, Dr. Ozawa, what can be done to get a handle on uh, this very serious problem? Yes, uh, it's really important to first recognize that this is a problem. Uh, it's a very understudied problem, sure. and um, that's why we conducted this analysis to see what the prevalence actually is. Um, and I, we believe that it's important to have uh, better data to really understand the scope of the issue and how best to address it. We also think that it's important to have global collaborative efforts to improve the supply chain management, the surveillance and regulatory capacity in many of these low and middle income countries to reduce the threat of poor quality medicines because these medications don't necessarily just stay in these low and middle income countries. They could also affect high income countries. Well, very good. I want to thank you, Dr. Sashiko Ozawa, for sharing your interesting study and for your time and expertise, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.